Okay, in this video we're going to look at introducing discounting to our model. So first of all we're going to make some cells to store our discount rates. We'll give ourselves the option of having different discount rates for costs and qualies. And there we go. You don't really need to make them look fancy, but there they go. Right, so once we've got these discount rates in place, we need to put a formula somewhere for our costs and qualies discount factors. First of all, let's just change these columns to be clear that these are undiscounted costs and undiscounted qualies. I know undiscounted is a pretty horrible word, but I think it's the only word that makes sense. Okay, and then we're going to get ourselves some extra columns here for discount factors. So we're going to have a discount factor for costs and a discount factor for qualies. Good, I don't need those. Right, so for costs, we need to make sure that we refer to the correct discount rate, which is over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hide some columns so that we can keep them all on one page or all in, all in view at once. Now, our discount factor is going to depend on the cycle, okay? But in the first cycle, we actually don't want any discounting applied at all. So if you assume that each of these cycles is one year, then in the first year, we would normally not apply any discounting. So we just need to remember that whenever we refer to the cycle, we actually want to subtract one from it. Okay. And the formula for the discount factor, which you can hopefully remember from the slides, is going to be something raised to the power of the time since uh, the model starts. So here it's going to be the cycle minus one, as you'll remember. Okay, I'm always going to be referring to this cycle column, whether I'm looking at costs or qualies. So just to make that clear, I can put a dollar in front of the F, F to say that I'm always referring to this column F, although as I go down the rows, I want um, the row to change that I'm referring to. Okay, and then what are we going to be raising to that power? Well, it's going to be one divided by one plus that discount rate. Okay, and that discount rate, I always want to refer to that exact cell when I'm discounting costs. So I'm gonna hit F4, so that this is now an absolute reference to that cell and that cell only. Okay, so as we can see in the first in the first cycle, there's no discounting is being applied. So when I'm count, calculating discounted costs, I'll be multiplying my undiscounted costs by this discount factor, and I'll just get back those undiscounted costs. But you'll see as I fill down here, um, and I'm going to use paste special, fill with formulae and number formats you'll see that over time this discount factor is getting smaller and smaller. So by the time we're out to about uh, 23, 24 years, uh, we've now discounted uh, by a factor of two effectively. Okay, so this, this formula was pretty much uh, able to be copied across to qualies, so I've just done a control R to copy that across, but what I need to do is just change so it's now referring to the discount rate for qualies. Okay, we'll go down. Okay, at the moment you'll see that these discount factors are the same in each row because I've got the same discount rate for costs and qualies, but sometimes you'll see costs and qualies being discounted at different rates. Sorry, it's normally you would see the costs being discounted at a higher rate than the qualies if they are being discounted at different rates. So here you can see that um, actually looking at things that are um, 40 years out, um, we're still um, 
valuing qualities quite highly, but we've discounted costs by a factor of 10. So here you can see that our uh, qualities are valued six times as much in 40 years as they are right now compared to costs. Okay, so now I've got this column of discount factors and I'll just put those both back to 3%, which is fairly typical. I'll unhide those columns again. And now what we want to do is make columns for discounted costs and discounted qualities. So I'll just copy those columns, stick them here, change these to say discounted costs and discounted qualities. Okay, now I need to change where these are actually referring. So in each case for the discounted costs, I want it to be the undiscounted cost times the discount factor for costs. Okay, I always, when I'm looking at costs, I always want to be looking at this column T. So I'm going to put a dollar in front of the T to make sure that I stick with that column even as I fill across um, to these other columns. So select these, Control R, Control D to fill right and fill down with the costs. And you can see at first the total costs are the same for undiscounted and discounted because in the first cycle there's no discounting. But over time, the discounted costs are getting lower and lower versus the undiscounted costs. Okay, good. We can just point out these are discounted costs. These are discounted qualities. The sums at the bottom have copied over correctly. We don't need to change those, but we need to change our formula in this discounted qualities section. So the discounted qualities in the healthy state are going to be equal to the undiscounted qualities times the discount factor for qualities this time. And again, I want to use that dollar sign in front of the U to make sure I'm always referring to column U. One way to do that is to just hit F4 three times, and that will make sure that you're referring to something, keeping the column constrained, but allowing the row to vary. Okay, and we'll fill right and fill down. So now we have undiscounted costs and qualities here. and discounted costs and qualities over here. So you'll see that our discounted values are quite a lot smaller, which is what we would expect. We can check that our formula is doing what we would expect. If we set the discount rate to zero, then we should get identical results here and here, which we do, and here and here, which we do. And if we set discount rates to something ridiculously high, like 999%, we should see that discounted costs are tending very much towards zero. We can't quite get it to zero um, unless we pick an even larger number here, but you see that it's basically doing what you would expect it to. So we put these back to something more plausible, and there we go. So we've got discounted costs and discounted qualities, and we did that by introducing these discount factor columns.